Hello again, church family, and anybody who might be watching this video. Greetings from the Miller household to your house. And we are excited once again to be coming into your home and bringing you some good news because we are living in a time where there's not such great news out there. And uh, we want you to be encouraged. Uh, the purpose of these videos is to just keep your faith strong. So we might be calling this Faith Talk. Anyway, I just want to share something with you that the Lord put in my heart today. We're going to look at the book of Luke chapter 6, and in verse 47, it says, Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, now notice it says, and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Now these are the words of Jesus, and he's making it pretty clear that it's not enough just to hear his sayings, but we have to do what he says. And I love the illustration he gives here. He said, if we'll be a doer of the word, we will not be shaken when the storms of life come. We'll be like that house that's built on a firm, solid foundation. Sure, there's storms all around us, the wind's blowing, the streams are rising, there's chaos all around, but we cannot be shaken because we're built on a firm foundation of faith. And so we wanna look at how we can be doers of the word. Uh, we're going to just read another scripture from the book of John, John chapter 14 and verse 1. Jesus said here, let not your heart be troubled. I like the amplified translation of this. He said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That means that we have a choice in the matter. We can decide to be troubled and we can decide not to be troubled. And I don't know about you, but as for me and my house, we will not be afraid. We will not be troubled, even though there are troubled times around us. Now, you might be wondering, that sounds fine and great, but how on earth can I prevent from being troubled and feeling afraid? Well, that's a good question. And I'm going to answer that from the book of Philippians, uh, which was written by the Apostle Paul. And I just want to make this clear that you actually can feel feelings of being troubled and feel the sensation of fear, but it doesn't mean that you have to let it get inside of you. We are to resist fear with all that we have within us. Now in Philippians chapter 4, we're given some real good instructions on how to do this. In verse 4, the Apostle Paul says this, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say rejoice. Well, step one is make it a point to rejoice. Uh, when you have negative circumstances in your life, you can still choose to find something to be thankful for. You can still rejoice that you have your health. You can rejoice that you're provided for. You can rejoice that you have a place to stay in a time of a storm. You can rejoice that you're part of a good church family if you are, and you can rejoice because if you're not, you can find a good church family. We all have something to rejoice about. And you know, I would suggest just be bold. Just cast all caution to the wind. Take some time to jump up and down and shake off the fear. Take some time to make yourself laugh and rejoice. You know, the opposite of fear is faith, and faith always has joy. So we've got to yield to that force of joy that's on the inside of us. Then it goes on to say in verse 6, Be anxious for nothing. The Amplified Translation says, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. That means, once again, we can choose not to do it. This is not a suggestion. This sounds to me more like a command. Do not fret. Do not be anxious. That means we have control over that. And it goes on to say, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So we see this. We can, instead of being anxious, we can have prayers and supplications and be thankful, making our requests known to God. And then the last part here in verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. In other words, you may know some facts that are stealing your peace. 
You may have information about coronavirus. You may have statistics. You may know how many people are afflicted with it, how many people have died from it. That's all of the natural understanding. But this verse is telling us that God's peace can pass our understanding. God's peace can actually guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. And then in verse 8, it tells us what to think about instead of these negative things that keep coming through the news waves. It says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, well, the word of God qualifies for that. Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So I just wanted to encourage you today, guard your heart by meditating on the right thing. Meditate on God's word day and night. Meditate on what he says about all of this. You know, we really can have days of heaven upon earth if we'll just keep his word in our hearts and in our minds, in our thoughts, and, and especially speaking his words out of our mouths. That's all for today. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time. God bless you.